that there will be no teaching or any work activity in the universities with effect from the expiry of the strike notice. And I've said it is expiring on 18th September 2024. Going forward, we are not going to negotiate with the vice chancellors because vice chancellors are our colleagues. How can employees negotiate among themselves? Huh? We should be negotiating by university councils. By, by the way, have you seen NAT negotiating with their teachers? Huh? Have you seen NAT negotiating with the head teachers of uh, secondary schools or primary schools or Kuped negotiating with principals? We are saying going forward, even tomorrow if they call me, I want gazetted council members. This is um, a joint statement from workers in the university sector. We are talking of uh, Universities Academic Staff Union, Kenya Union of um, Kenya, Kenya Union, Kenya University Staff Union, Kusu and Uwasu, and Kudeha. We are issuing a joint statement with regard to the issues that we have confronting us in the labor, in the university sector. Immense, massive labor violations in the university sector, which today we must address so that we can get justice and fair labor practices in the university sector among the workers. We cannot be ignored over years. We cannot be told to retain, uh, to retain allowances that were given in 2008 to date. The rates of inflation are very high. So many things have changed. It is only the workers in the university sector whose rights are continuously violated. And we must put a stop to this if we have to serve this country effectively. And therefore, I'm going to invite the Secretary Generals that are here to address us on the issue. We have Dr. Constantine Wasonga of Uwasu and Dr. Charles Muhuaya of Kusu. Our colleagues are joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Constantine Wasonga, Secretary General of Uwasu. I'll read the press statement in English, and my colleague, Dr. Charles Mukwaya, will do the Kiswahili version. Fellow Kenyans, ladies and gentlemen, employees of public universities in Kenya, represented by the three unions, namely Universities Academic Staff Union, Kenya University Staff Union, and Kodea workers wish to communicate as follows. Whereas the other public service employees in Kenya have enjoyed the benefits of their basic salaries and house allowances from July 1st, 2021, whereas the said unions have pulled all efforts to negotiate the 2021-2025 CBA without corresponding enthusiasm from other players, namely the Interpublic University Council Consultative Forum, IPUCCF, and the government. Whereas in the last five years, the value of the Kenya shillings has declined, its purchasing power has devastatingly eroded, and prices of basic commodities skyrocketed, various taxes imposed on workers' pay, whereas the inflationary rates threatened to improv improvise and popularize the hapless university workers, the government has engaged in selective justice and awarded a section of workers uh, pay rise and ignoring university employees. Whereas this selective justice amounts to government's overt and covert acts of impunity, violating workers' constitutional right to fair remuneration, contrary to Article 
41.2a of the Constitution of Kenya, whereas under the Constitution, university employees cannot bear the brunt of discrimination, but must be accorded competitive and reasonable working condition as by law established and as enshrined in the Constitution. Whereas in the meantime, staff have restrained themselves thereby, giving the government and universities adequate time to negotiate with us respectively. Instead, we continue watching corrupt cartels, plundering public funds, while university employees and their families go hungry constantly, being reminded to be patriotic. Now, therefore, in view of the foregoing, we take a position and demand and state as follows. One, that the 30,000 university employees in public universities and constituent colleges shall withdraw their labor on 18th of uh, September 2018, 2024, until their demands are met. That there will be no teaching or any work activity in the universities with effect from the expiry of the strike notice. And I've said it is expiring on 18th September 2024. We urge our parents and our students that these actions are not meant to punish them, but to highlight the plight of workers in public universities. That failure to which all employees of public universities will be forced to resort to other valuable means to reclaim their lost long glory. And on the 18th, it is the strike. I want to give this opportunity to my colleague to give the Kiswahili version. Dr. Mukwaya. Uh, Santeni wanahabari ina langu naitwa Charles Mukwaya, katibu mkuu wa wafanyikazi katika vyo vikuu vya Kenya. Lengo letu la kuwa hapa leo ni kuwapa tu ujumbe kwamba sisi kama wafanyikazi katika vyo vikuu tumekuwa tukihadiwa na wale ambao wanasimamia vyo vikuu na serikali ya kwamba kwa miaka mitano iliyopita sasa tumekuwa kwenye meza ya mazungumzo majadiliano na hawa mabwenyenye ili kwamba wafanyikazi katika vyo vikuu wapate nyongeza marupurupu wanapoendelea kufanya kazi katika hiyo hiyo ingawaje sisi tumekuwa tukiipatia kipaumbele mazungumzo na majadiliano hayo hatujapata njia mwafaka hatujapata kuona lengo letu la kuweza kuketi chini na hao wakubwa tumekuwa tukipelekwa tu tunaenda kwenye meza ya mazungumzo hamna chochote ambacho tunachokiona tunakukuja kwenye wafanyikazi na ili hali wafanyikazi wa uma wenzetu katika idara zingine za serikali wamepata nyongeza kwa marupurupu yao na ili hali pia tunajua kama wa Kenya hali ya maisha imekuwa juu gharama ya maisha imepanda bei za vitu zimepanda kwa hivyo wenzetu katika idara nyingine za serikali wanapopewa nyongeza ya mshahara wafanyikazi katika vyo vikuu wamekuwa na subira wakingojea kwamba majadiliano haya yatakuwa ya maana kuwaletea pia wapate nyongeza lakini hamuna kitu chochote ambacho tumekipata ndio sababu tukasema kuanzia leo tuweze kuja mbele tuambieni wa Kenya na wale wote ambao wanatusikiza ya kwamba wafanyikazi hao sasa wamechoka subira yao imeisha kujadiliana kuanzia mwaka wa 2020 na 2021 hadi sasa hivi kama hakuna chochote ambacho kimetokea basi tumeweka kikomo kwa hayo majadiliano ndio sababu tumesema tumepeana ilani ya kuanzisha mchakato wa kufanya mgomo wa wafanyikazi katika vyo vikuu na ilani hiyo inashiria kwamba mgomo utaanza ifikapo mwezi huu tarehe 18 
ikiwa tajiri hata kuwa amefanya lile ambalo linatakikana kuwawezesha hawa wafanyikazi wapate nyongeza yao ya mshahara tarehe 18 hamtakuwa na kazi yoyote katika vyo vikuu ikiendelea kama hiyo ndiyo lugha ambayo serikali na tajiri wanaelewa sisi kama wasimamizi wa wafanyikazi na wafanyikazi hao katika vyo vikuu tumeamua kuwa hiyo ndiyo njia basi tutaenda hatuwezi tukaendelea kuwa na subra tunaambiwa sisi tuwe wa Kenya ambao wanapenda nchi yao lakini wenzetu wanakula wa kizasa lakini wafanyikazi katika vyo vikuu wanaelekea kuwa masikini na familia zao. Kio tumekiweka na ijulikane bayana ya kwamba liwe liwalo mgomo upo ikiwa serikali na wasimamizi wa vyo vikuu hawatatusikiza. Watupatie pia nyongeza ya mshahara la sivyo mgomo tutairindima ngoma hiyo mpaka vile watakavyo tusikiza. Asante. Is there any question? Any question or clarification? Can we assume that uh, it is clear? Hmm? Hmm. We are talking about the administrative and Yes, yes. I want to say that uh, with the coming of uh, SRC, all chapter CBAs are being frustrated by the vice chancellors and uh, in collusion with SRC. The reason why we are saying so, SRC gave guidelines how CBS are supposed to be negotiated. There's a clear process. They gave that guideline in uh, 2019. But universities have failed to comply with that guideline. One, after a union has given their proposal, the universities are supposed to make recommendation on each and every item or clause. They are supposed to give recommendation and prove proof for budget allocation. But here is a case whereby they are requesting for advice from SRC without corresponding recommendation. And in many cases, what they are saying, they are telling SRC, retain the rates. And those rates were negotiated in 20, 2008. How can you retain rates that were negotiated in 2018? And how do you want SRC to advise you while you yourself, you have not budgeted for the CBA? Mm -hmm. So in most cases, the chapter CBAs, SRC is just telling them to retain the rates. In other ad advices that we have got from SRC, they are advising chapters to negotiate non-financial items. And the non-financial non items in our CBAs are just rubrics. So we just go there to negotiate rubrics. I want to say that there are many chapters that have not negotiated 2013-2017 CBA. And imagine we are talking about 2021-2025 national CBA. While in those chapters, they have benefited from 2013-2017 national CBA. While they don't have 2013-2017 internal CBA. Same applies. We negotiated national CBA of 2017-2021. There are chapters that to date do not have 20 17, 20, 21, internal CBA. 
Now we are negotiating 2021, 2025 national CBA. There are chapters that have not even called their branch official to negotiate 2021, 2025 CBA. So there's backlog. But this backlog is being brought about by the conspiracy between SRC and vast chancellors of public universities. They don't want to negotiate. I think I've answered you. Uh, another question? Today I'm in the moods of answering questions. <laughs> hey, ask today. Uh, 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 let, let me ask myself and answer myself. <laughs> I want you to get it clearly. 2021, 2025 CBA, why are we going out? We are going out because we have realized as we negotiate with the IPCCF, <laughs> they are the ones telling SRC, on basic salary, give them nil. On house allowance, give them nil. On uh, harmonization of other allowances, don't harmonize. Then what SRC does, they take their letterhead, eh, and now advise IPCCF eh, that retain. We thought SRC was an independent commission. And out of the documentation, how they are requesting for advice, I can take with them. Give them nil. If you harmonize these allowances, universities will collapse. I want to tell you there's gross unfairness in public universities. Let me give you an example. In the public sector, retirement age is uniform. Whether you are grade 1 or you are in grade S, it is 60 years. Come to university. Some are retiring at 60. Those are academic members of staff. Some retiring at uh, 65 years. Some are retiring at 70. Some are retiring at 74. Some are retiring at 75. Some are retiring at 79. One sector, one employer federation, one union, one government have different retirement ages for academic staff in this country. And what we are saying as academic staff, we shall have one uniform retirement age. That's why we have differed. The next one, I want to take you to commuter. <laughs> some are paying 6,000, some are paying 15, some are paying eight, some are paying 20, some are paying 50, some are paying 35. Same employer federation, same government, same union. They don't want to harmonize commuter. We go to medical scheme. Others are telling their members to go to their kiosks. They have local clinics. Others have comprehensive, uh, comprehensive, uh, comprehensive medical cover. Others tell their uh, uh, staff, treat yourself. Then you can now come and claim. While in the public sector, employees have a uniform, non contributory medical cover. That is what we want. We go to book allowance. Other universities don't pay book allowance. Others pay. Others give you 4,000, others give you 10,000, others 25,000, others 50. Same government, same employer federation, same union. And these members are performing equal work. SRC in their act says they are striving for equal work and equal. When we come to universities, they don't want to harmonize. And what we are saying as academic staff, all allowances in public universities shall be over harmonized. You cannot have a professor at the University of Nairobi paid a different allowance, another one in Moranga a different allowance. 
And when we come to house allowance, the last time our house allowances were reviewed was in the CBA of 2008. To date, SRC has refused to review house allowance for public university staff. The value of uh, that review in 2008 is totally different with the value in 2024. Even the government increased the houses by 10%. So we cannot be static for close to 14 years. So house allowance must be reviewed. I want to move to car loan and mortgage. SRC, out of their goodwill, to the circular that all public sector employees were entitled to car loan and mortgage. From 2015, universities have refused to develop car loan and mortgage for university staff, while other public sector employees are just being prodded, come for car loan, come for mortgage. Us, our employer, has uh, uh, blatantly refused to develop that car loan and mortgage. And what lecturers are telling me, they shall not go back until they are given car loan and mortgage. And I want to give you an example, because you people, you are young people. In the 80s, 70s, 90s, the people who are entitled to import due to free cars were don't in this country. Now they took over what was our entitlement, and now I've taken it to the public sector, while as we are left wondering. Go and check, check history. Don't you allow to import due to free cars. And that is where we are heading to. I want you to leave here that what has made us differ is failure by IPCCF and the SRC to harmonize allowances in public universities in Kenya. They have a in public universities. They have harmonized allowances for other public sector employees. But when it comes to university workers, they don't want to harmonize allowances. So we'll give you our proposals. You will see our demands. And another thing, SRC came with something that we don't know in the labor movement. They came up with something known as 50, 50th percentile. 50th percentile. And they are claiming that they conducted a survey. During negotiation, we are asking them, where did you conduct this survey? What were the variables? What were the factors? Whom did you survey? And after doing that, did you subject this survey to public participation? So that we could know in advance that for negotiations of 2021-2025, we will not be guided by wage guidelines, but will be guided by a percentile, which is not known in the labor movement. And they are saying that the university's workers are at 49th percentile. Whether it is cooked, we don't know. Because they have refused to share with us their survey. So next year, they will also come. Oh, today we have realized you are at 59th percentile. We want that survey. And we want to inter interrogate it. Are we together? Another thing that has made us differ. In 20... 17, 2021, CBA beacons. SRC said that public university staff, just like other public sector employees, are entitled to automatic annual increment. And they said the annual increment, that university should input annual increment prior to the implementation of the CBA tables. Do you now know what they are saying now? Now they are saying that that annual increment is not there, but it is in the tables they are proposing. 
And the budget they are giving us is inclusive of the automatic annual increment. While we know they are the ones who even advised last year that universities should budget for annual increments from their uh, internal budgets. Now they have come up with a figure. This figure is the CBA figure. This figure is the one for automatic annual increment. And to date, they have not talked about the pension component. 2021, they gave us a figure. This figure included CBA tables and included the pension component. This year, they are not talking about pension. We are saying, can SRC be consistent in giving adversary? And can SRC be independent? Let them not be influenced by vice chancellors. And we have resolved. Going forward, we are not going to negotiate with the vice chancellors. Because vice chancellors are our colleagues. How can employees negotiate among themselves? Huh? We should be negotiating by university councils. By, by the way, have you seen NAT negotiating with their teachers? Huh? Have you seen NAT negotiating with the head teachers of uh, secondary schools or primary schools or compared negotiating with principals? We are saying going forward, even tomorrow if they call me, I want gazetted council members, not vice chancellors. Thank you very much. But we gave them. How can we negotiate without a proposal, Lewis? We have a proposal. I'll give you up to after this meeting. Okay. And even our conciliation proposal, how we wanted to conclude, uh, solve this dispute. They are there. If you want a copy, we'll give you. Okay. Hmm. Do this. Owasu is consistent. One we have rejected. Once we have rejected, we have rejected. We did not change our position. The new funding model, the union is very clear. We have rejected it. Because one, we have not been told the mode of disbursement. How will it be disbursed? With the, the, the debts in universities, if you give them money, they'll pay the debts. Where will university workers get their salary? Where will we get the salary? Another thing. How can my, my parents' background determine my future? If my parents are poor, you should not announce it to everybody. That now you, Wasonga, you come from a, a poor background, you are in band one. So when I walk in campus, everybody knows I'm in band one. Oh, this is a needy student. Will I even study? Huh? Huh? Oh, this one is a needy student. He's very needy. He's in bad one. We love and concentrate in class. Huh? Even when I'm doing exam, everybody knows my band. Oh, this one bad one, very poor. The girls will avoid you and you will not marry. Even girls will avoid me. Oh, Kumbe, who you from just a needy background? Huh? Let all university be funded. Don't use my uh, uh, parents' background to determine my future. You are traumatizing students in public universities. You and your suburb wanna say wanna inama too. But all you have wanna inama too. Another question? Solidarity. Solidarity union makes us strong. Union power. Power. tare kumina nane. We launch it officially here. Kujeni. Eighteen.